Hey, badass business owners, I got a question for you. Should you include your time when you're pricing your products or services? Well, I'm going to scream this one. Yes, you absolutely must be including your time when you are pricing your products or services. In this video, we're going to take a moment to answer three questions. Why you want to capture your time, how much you should plan to make by capturing your time and where to capture your time. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so whether you own a service-based business or you sell a product, either way, you're gonna capture your time in some form or fashion. So I think this is going to help you out. The question becomes, how do you make sure that you're getting paid correctly? After all, you wear two hats in your business. The first hat you wear is as an employee and you're gonna get paid fair wage for the work that you do within the business. And we're going to dive into this a little bit more here in a second. The second way you get paid is as the business owner. And that pay is based off of the success of the business. If the business makes money, you make money. If the business doesn't make money, you don't make money. And we'll talk about this as well. Now, obviously you want a successful business. That's why we start a business. We don't start a business to fail. We start a business to be very successful so we can make way more money as a business owner than we ever did as an employee. Now the question becomes, where does your money go when you are pricing your products or services to make sure you get paid in both those hats? Great question. That's what we're going to look at. Now, there is a calculation that I tell every business owner they must know. This is the only thing I ever say you need to memorize because it's the flow of money in your business. You have sales minus cost of goods sold minus expenses equals your profits. So please memorize this sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. And we're going to show you how this will help you out when you are doing the pricing part. Now in your cost of goods, this is where most employee wages go. If you are an employee, when you're wearing your employee hat, if you are involved in the making of the product, let's say you make soap and your time is you're the person that makes the soap, you are part of the cost of goods because there is no soap without you. Uh, maybe you make things that you make and you hand make and you sell that same thing. You are part of making it. If that thing would not exist without you making it, this is where you are going to be paid as an employee. If you do the service, let's say you're a plumber or a handyman and you actually have to do the install, you are part of the service. You are part of the cost of goods. It cannot be installed without you. If you clean carpets, the carpets can't get cleaned without you. Therefore, you are an employee that is part of cost of goods because you cannot deliver the service without you. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's say you own a t-shirt shop. All right. Well, it takes you 30 minutes to create the shirt, right? The shirt doesn't just create itself. You have to take the design that someone picks and you're going to put it on the shirt. And let's just say that takes you 30 minutes to go from beginning to end on creating that t-shirt. Well, a fair wage is something that's really important. It's not what your, your ego wants to make. It's not that, hey, I'm a business owner. I should make 50 bucks an hour. No. If you were to hire someone off of the street to do what it is that you do in the business, that's the fair wage. So let's just say it's $15 an hour and it takes you the half hour to make the shirt. That tells you that you have labor costs to be paid of $7.50. Sense. So when we're looking at the full cost of goods, we have the shirt. Let's say it costs you $5 to get the shirt. You're using $2.50 worth of vinyl. There's a lot of stuff on the shirt, front and back, whatnot. And you have labor. So altogether, your cost of goods is $15 for that particular shirt. So if you have another product that you make, you would do the exact same exercise. Now, sometimes you have to divide it out. You might be making something and you make multiple. Uh, you might make 10 shirts in an hour, in which case to make one shirt for the cost of goods, you would divide it by the 10. Uh, I'm not gonna get too technical on this. I'll do a different one on that later. But at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that your time is captured in each of the products that you sell. Now, let's say you're a handyman and you're going to install a ceiling fan for somebody. Well, and it's going to take you an hour to get that ceiling fan up. A fair wage for a handyman is 20 bucks. So it's going to be one hour, which means it's 20 bucks in labor. The ceiling fan costs $75. The labor is $20, which means the cost of goods for this particular thing 
is $95. So you can see how we're tying in the labor into the cost of goods, whether you have a product that you have to create or a service that you deliver. And once again, when we go back to our calculation, your pay is going right here under the cost of goods sold. And that's how you're going to find out where your pay goes. But we're not done. Because what if you don't make a product and you don't provide a service? Then what? What do you do with your employee time? Well, that's going to be a little bit different because that's going to be here under the expenses. And for those of you that aren't part of the product or the service, you're probably going to be part of the operational expenses. Now, this doesn't mean you're automatically here, but a big chunk of people, especially if they own a store uh, or a brick and mortar, they're going to go here because if you have to hire an employee to do what it is that you would do, then you would need that. So for example, when I had my ice cream shop, or maybe you have your store, if you don't hire, if it, you're there and there's no other employees, you would have normally had to hire an employee to do the hours that you are working in the store. So the same thing would happen. You would just calculate that out. How many hours with it's $15 an hour and you were there for four hours acting as an employee, then you would have operational expenses for that time. So it wouldn't go into your cost of goods, it would go into your operational expenses for it. Now a good rule of thumb in all of this is if normally you would hire someone for what it is that you're doing, it is best to capture it. So if it's not just the running of the business, so when you're working on the business, you're just running the business, that's different. That's your owner stuff. That's your owner hat that you're wearing. But if you physically have to be doing something to keep the business going, to be an actual employee in the business, this is why we want to capture those times as part of either your cost of goods or your expenses. Think of it as the duties that you perform as an employee, not as an owner. These are part of doing what we call cost of doing business. Those are the wages you capture as an employee. It's different. Now, I want to give a word of caution here because it has nothing to do with taxes. Therefore, sometimes what happens is with it comes to accounting and stuff like that, all we're doing is we're just trying to make sure you have a clean profit and loss, that we have a clean understanding of when we're pricing and where our money is going. Because when we price, we start with sales, we make sure we take off our cost of goods, we make sure we cover our expenses, and that's how we get to our profit. So when an accountant's doing it, accountant's looking at it from a tax standpoint, which sometimes they'll do your pay a little different because you don't get an actual uh, W-2. You don't actually have payroll set up for yourself. We're just saying write yourself two checks, one as an employee and one as the owner. Both of them will still count as an owner's draw towards taxes and all that. They can explain all that piece. But don't, don't let that get you hung up. What you're trying to do is get clean numbers for your business so that you can price correctly. Your P&L is where they're going to capture all of that other stuff. And that's really what we're trying to do is, you know, where does it go on your P&L for the line for you to be able to capture your cost of goods and your expenses so this way you have the right numbers when you're pricing. Let the accountant do what the accountant does. But when it comes down to uh, you pricing correctly, you want to make sure you capture your time as both an employee and as an owner, the accountant will put it all together and deal with it for your taxes. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you keep in mind is a fair wage in your local area is going to be different. Uh, if you would hire a minimum wage, you're going to use that. If, if somebody would be paid off the street, 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks an hour, you want to go with that. But I know what some of you are thinking. I want to make more money than just a fair wage. You want to make more. Remember, you didn't want just a job. You want to create a business. Great think because this is where we tie it into your pricing because remember we have sales minus cost of goods equals expenses to get down to the profits well guess what this profit line this bottom line number after you you pay for everything this is where you get paid as the business owner because as the business owner you get paid out of the profits but your profits go two places one part of your profits is what's called retained earnings. It's what you leave in the business to grow the business. So it's to cover the expenses during your slow times. It could be for you to buy a piece of equipment, but retained earnings is money you leave in the business that you don't pull out. The second part of it is what you do pull out, what's called an owner's draw. And this would be your payment that you take as a business owner. So sometimes when you hear people say, oh, I never take money out of my business, I leave it all in there. Well, yeah, they're probably paying themselves as an employee in the business, but they're not taking their owner's draw. They're leaving that in to grow 
the business because they are probably paying themselves, but they're paying themselves as the employee part and the profits of the business they're leaving in it. Unless they have another job and income from somewhere else, then they may not be paying themselves as an employee. It's very critical that you pay yourself as an employee so you can price right. But also we want to get you to where you can live off of your profits because that's your ultimate goal. Now, it really comes down to if the business is profitable because the more profitable the business is, the more money that you personally make. So our mission, our goal is to have a very profitable business. And that all starts with us pricing our products and services correctly. Now, here, let's take a look at the two different ways. We're going to look at the old way where a lot of people do things and looking at it through the way that I'm showing you here. In the old way, if somebody sold this t-shirt, they probably would say, okay, my cost of my shirt are five bucks. My vinyl is 250. So my cost of goods is 750. Uh, a lot of people will go out there and tell you, well, you know what? Just double that. That's what you want to do. You want to double it. You want to double that. And that's going to be your selling price. In which case this t-shirt maker taking that advice would say, okay, I'm going to sell it for $15. And I'm smart enough. I know I got to put some money on the side to pay my bills and my expenses. So I'm going to set a dollar of every t-shirt off to the side. And yahoo, I made 650 and they turn around and they take the 650 and they stick it in their pocket. Well, the question is, but did you do it the right way? And let's look at it the new way of how this would go. Because if you're doing it where you're capturing your pay as an employee, you're still going to, let's just say you use the same $15 selling price. Let's see what that comes out to be. We know the cost of the shirt and the vinyl is the $7.50. We know our labor costs are $10. We're going to change it up for this example. Let's say it's $10 at a half hour. So it's five bucks. And you set aside your dollar for your expenses. So you actually made a dollar fifty when it comes down to the profit after you take care of your cost of goods, your expenses, and you get down to your profit. But aren't you still making six fifty? Well, yes and no. The issue is the employee you, yes, when you're wearing the employee hat, you did make the five dollars. And the owner you could take the full amount as an owner's draw and you could have taken the dollar 50. So yeah, if you put it together, that's 650, but that's not you running a business that made you 650. You, the employee in the business made five bucks as a business owner, as a business owner, you only made a dollar 50. And some of that, like we said, you had to leave in the business. The reason that I point this out is because so many businesses fail because the business didn't make a profit. It wasn't that the owner wasn't making money. They were making money as an employee, but they weren't making money as a business. And what I'm trying to do is to help you ensure that you're making money as the business. Because when it comes down to setting your prices, you're going to make sure that you're including your wage when it comes to all of this, that your employee wage is part of all that. Because if you're not just making enough money in, in at the end of the day, you're like, oh, the profit's making 650 when the reality is the business was actually only making 150. You see, you can't grow and expand your business because if you ever have to bring anybody in to help you out, guess what? That's going to keep tapping into those profits because you never built in somebody else doing the employee hat that you currently wear in your business. And ultimately, this is why it comes down to you need to know your business numbers. You have to know the right flow of the money in and out of your business because this is going to help you price better to ensure that you're covering your employee hat as well as your owner hat. All right. Remember, at the end of the day, you created a business. You didn't just want to create a job for yourself. The reason you wanted to do it, yeah, you may have wanted to get away from a boss or something like that, but ultimately it was to create a business that you controlled how much money you make. And you do that through the ownership side of owning the business, not through the employee side of it. Now I know where some of you are asking, you're going, okay, this is great. I want to know my business numbers better, but where do I start? Well, I'm here to help you out. First thing, once again, you've got to memorize this calculation. Sales minus cost of goods minus Minus expenses equals your profits because when you're pricing, you're going to make sure you run the numbers through this calculation to make sure you are pricing correctly. So you might say, hey, I'm going to sell this thing for 20 bucks or 50 bucks or $7. Doesn't matter. It's going to follow the same flow because it also matches your profit and loss that we saw earlier. But this is exactly how you need to price all of your products is to make sure you plug in all of these numbers to make sure you're hitting the profit that you want. Like I said earlier, you've got to make sure you're capturing those employee wages in 
all of that. So that's another place that you want to make sure that you're doing right away. So go back and look at all of your pricing and see if you've got that captured in there today or not and rerun your numbers, see what they look like. You want to learn the basics of your profit and loss statement. And here's a video right here that can help you learn the basics of it. So if you've never looked at your income statement, uh, sometimes it's called an income statement, profit and loss statement, p &L. It's got all kinds of fancy tunes. At the end of the day, it's profit and loss income statement. Uh, there's a video here to help get you going. Once again, you're going to notice if you, my little guys here, income minus cost of sales, which is income, minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals your profits. The calculation works on a profit and loss as well, just like I was saying earlier. And if you want to dive in deeper into pricing and if you're doing it the right way, I've got two different videos, one for if you have a service and one if you have products. And we'll kind of use, you'll see the same uh, calculation, you'll see the same process that we're using today worked into both of these videos that will also help you out. So take a look at them. I'll put them in the show notes. And of course, if you always, if you want to learn more about your business numbers, I do have a course relatively cheap to help everybody dive in deeper. It gives you a crash course on it, but you can also hit subscribe and never miss any of these training videos that I put out. And that's going to help you as well. So hit subscribe, go back, look and through there and you'll find any of those videos. And if you like what you see, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really means a lot for other people to tell them that they really should check out this video. And I would appreciate that. Now get out there and be the badass business owner that I know you are.